in the world, but welcome to this moment. My name is Shaw Wild, and we are in my room in Bali, where I've been painting this morning, and um, let me show you what I've created. It's still drying. <laughs> it's like the first time I've painted in six months, and I it was inspired by my garden outside the window. And then I think it also kind of reminds me of like the sunrises I've been watching. And it's like so many random textures. It looks totally, I'm having that issue with artists. Hi, Jerry. Artist problem where you're like, is this even good? Or is this just a mess? What is, what did I even create? Are those flowers or is that a sun? I, I don't know what I'm looking at, but I just made it. <laughs> This is the first painting that we've made this year in Bali. Happy birthday, Jerry. Hello, everybody. We've got some fun textures going on. Gold. Hi, Ronald. So that's what I was playing with this morning. And then, of course, there's three paintings that we end up with. There's the painting that I was intending to create. There's the painting, this one's not done yet, that's the um, the palette, so I'll keep adding color to this and scraping it off. So I, I use it like an, you know, like an artist palette, like one of those wooden round things where you, you squish the paint on and then you scoop it off and paint on the actual painting. So the first one I showed you is the actual painting. This is the palette. And then I've got these little byproduct papers that I use to dry my brushes. And they end up usually being my favorite because they get very abstract. So right now we look like we're in a kindergarten classroom. There's just a bunch of random smushes on the paper, but they will evolve. I just wanted to give you a little update on the play that I've been doing. I've been inspired by the bougainvillea flowers that grow outside of my room. So I just kind of keep it right there. Hi. Good morning, Gary. Hello, Dwayne. Hello, hello, hello. Jerry said he's 39. Congratulations, happy birthday. I've got all the paint in this basket. I decided to not paint on the cardboard because it created too many weird texture patterns underneath. So instead I'm just painting straight on the the tiles with the sarong down. And um, I don't think it goes through. And even if it does go through, we can wash it off the tile. So those are my updates on paintings. I painted this morning at sunrise alone without a live stream going. Um, as a way to have a sacred moment alone creating. Because so that's super important. Like it's super important to have time alone with yourself and your passion and your hobby when you're not filming it and photographing it and sharing it with someone else and broadcasting it to the internet. It's so important. This might not even be relevant to so many of you. So many people don't even share what they do on the internet at all, which is kind of amazing and wonderful. So your whole life might be doing hobbies in your own sacred time. The crazy fun thing might be to share something. Um, but for somebody who's always sharing online like me, it's really uh, special to have moments where I just wake up in the morning and I pour myself a cup of tea and I don't grab the phone or the camera to film what I'm going to do. I just get to enjoy doing it. And I have to schedule those in. <laughs> so this morning, the, the sunlight was coming up from the ocean and the whole room was glowing this like soft, pretty, pretty golden sunrise color. You know, like when the sun comes in the in the window and then the, the, the walls catch the light and it's like 
somewhere like um, Seattle, where the, the sunrise takes a long time, like you could have that golden light on the walls for an hour. I remember in the afternoon in Seattle, I would lay in bed sometimes for like an hour reading a book in the afternoon and just like this dreamy golden hour. That's what it is, the golden hour. In the tropics, you don't have a golden hour. You have a golden five minutes. <laughs> like, the sun is intense and it's bright and then it gets closer to the horizon and it's really blinding, like right at your eye level. You know, because it's a high, during the day the sun is high in the sky and it's like, you're kind of like beaten down by the sun. And then as it comes down to sunset time, it's glaring right in your eyes. And then right before it sinks down, and it will take about five minutes to just whoop, drop below the, from like blinding you to gone, you've got a five minute golden hour. Or golden, five, five golden minutes. Five golden minutes. So, point is, is that I woke up this morning and I've been waking up around 5.30 in the morning when there's, there's no light. I wake up in the dark. And, um, and then I see the, like, neon fire out there coming up into the world. And then the sun pops up. And I've got five minutes, five to ten minutes, where my room is this glowing golden orb. And I'm like, oh. Oh, this is a magic moment. I want to be alone. I want to have a cup of tea. I want to write in my journal. I want to paint. I want to do something that's creative and lovely and soft and feminine. Um, and because it happens so quickly, there's no time to like grab the camera and do a live stream anyway because the light would be gone. So I'd have to plan ahead. Um, Hmm. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? This like golden hour of the day where there's this magical light. I'm thinking about being an artist not as, not with a focus on what you create. Like you're not an artist because you created a product. You're not an artist. I just realized I'm blocking my guitar and it would look really cute if it sat next to me. <laughs> you're not an artist because you made a painting. You're not an artist because you wrote a book or played the guitar, or a song, or did a dance, or designed a garden. Like, you're... Those are artistic acts, or art artistic creations, activities. But being an artist is more about your mindset, and the way you engage with the world. This is what I'm thinking about at the moment. I'm not an artist because I painted a picture. <clears throat> I'm an artist because when I wake up in the morning, my whole body is oriented towards observing the world identifying beauty and allowing myself to fully feel all of the emotions that come through and to express them. However, songs, paintings, whatever. But it's being involved in this whole cycle of showing up, opening up, taking in, perceiving, feeling it, sensing it, and then regurgitating it back out into the world. Consuming the world and then creating something new to contribute to the world. 
that participating in that cycle is the lifestyle of the artist. That's why we end up with these products. There's paintings because somebody saw something, heard something, felt something, and it was all inside the body and they needed to get it out and it came out in the form of a painting. <clears throat> but it's not about the painting itself. The paint, it, it was about the experience that that person had creating it and it's about the experience that you have viewing it and consuming it. It's about the experience of the artist and the audience. The product is the means of connecting those two people. It's the bridge. Similar to me talking to you right now, it's not really about the words I'm saying. It's about the fact I'm feeling something, thinking something, there's something happening inside of this body, and I'm doing my best to gather it up and express it in the form of spoken word. So it travels through space and time and amazing technology, and arrives in your ears, in your head, and then it creates an effect in your body, and now you're gonna think something, and you're gonna feel something. So it's not really about the words in transit. The words are more of the, the messenger of an experience. Shah is experiencing this thing. I want you to experience something, so I'm going to pass on my experience to you over the bridge or through the form or the messenger of words. So it's the same exact thing. When you look at a painting or listen to a song, somebody had an experience and they are transplanting that experience into your body. So you're not an artist because you made a painting. You're an artist when you are open to experiencing the world, and then you do something to express that experience and pass it on. Which is why creativity is so spiritual. It's being present with the world and participating in the act of like being a creator. The universe that we exist in, that we are part of, like you are a, you are a, seg a segment of the universe, and the universe is expanding, so you, the segment of the universe that is you, is expanding, and you're responsible for that little segment of the universe that you are. And in expansion, you are creating, so you're the creator of whatever's expanding out from you right here. So you're the creator of the universe around you. And so the creator, the, the creator of the universe is an artist. Cool. <laughs> These are the thoughts that I'm thinking this morning. What does... Uh, what do these thoughts make you think? What are you saying in these comments? Just having a nice little conversation about, about art this morning. People are happy that I'm painting again, yay! Ronald says that you're still recovering from an accident, that I helped you recover, you realize you're so lucky to still be here and that art is helping you heal. Yes, hello Brian. 
Gary says, your explanation and expression of art is well said. Thank you, Gary. In the comments, would you guys please, please share, please express. How have you uh, expressed yourself? lately what art form or or means of creation have you been playing with i am aware of the fact that many of you might not feel like artists so just don't let that get in the way just think about it as like creating means you put You made, you made something, you did something, you made a meal, you put together an outfit, you put together a sentence. Like, those are literally acts of creation. You're creating something that wasn't there before. Um, you can create an environment, you can create a dinner party. Can you just take a moment, we're gonna sit here for just a couple minutes together before I go create a novel. And I would love to hear from you, from all around the world, for each other. Think of how you've been creating in your life and share about it in the comments. And you can be creative, like I said, maybe surprise yourself. Think of a way you've created without even realizing it. Hi, Brian. You say that I usually like a painting because of the experience at the time of it being painted, not necessarily what it looks like. Yes, I know this about you, Brian. You love the story and being, um, the, the experience of the act of seeing it come into life. Jeff says that your art is percussion. You make rhythm of musical life. Ronald, you just said, a car hit me when I was out riding your Harley. It sucked. So what did you create? Gary says, you've been using words to describe fanciful futures. Brian says that you created a diagnosis from a series of random symptoms. Hell yeah. I was wondering if you were going to write that, Brian. Our friend Brian here is a doctor, so I was like, I wonder if Brian will realize how creative he's being in his work. Can you guys think of that? We're having a, there's enough people here that we can have a nice little list of unusual ways. Not unusual, but ways we might not think of creativity normally. Um, like I just created a cup of tea. Are we impressed by that? Maybe not. But if I was a two year old child and this was one of my newer skills in life, that's impressive. Sometimes it really helps to go back to thinking of yourself as a child because if what you just did required motor skills and coordination, then that was something you had to learn. And if you ever lose those abilities, like if you have an accident, if you're in a car crash or something and you're no longer able to use your body and your motor skills and control yourself as you did before, you have to relearn it. And it's a bitch to relearn that stuff. And so that's why when, um, when we're young children, it takes, in that first year of life, it's taking literally all of our energy to learn how to eat and to walk and like do all of these things. It's a complete full-time job, 24 hours a day, learning how to do the basic things that we now take for granted. So you can just wind it back a little bit when you're sitting around now in your middle of your life and you're like, oh, I haven't created anything recently. And you're like, that's ridiculous. Like, tell that to a two-year-old who wishes they could do a quarter of the things that you did today. I mean, they're probably not wishing for it. They're quite content at where they are in their journey. But, um, for example, I was just showing you guys this painting. Like, look, I made this painting. But to make this painting involved so many other basic skills I know I look like a grown woman, so it might be hard to imagine this, but just realize, 
about 30 years ago or so, I had to learn how to hold a paintbrush. I had to learn how to hold a pencil. I also had to learn how to hold a piece of paper like this. This is a skill that I acquired. I didn't have this when I came out of the womb. I didn't know how to pinch things like this. Um, color theory, putting different colors together and knowing the color wheel. I learned that like 25 years ago and it's taken me years and years and years of practice with photography and painting and, and studying and taking classes to learn just about colors. Um, to put together this video, to know that it would look nice to have a, a camera on that side because it complements the, the things on this side and it kind of balances it and I sit in the middle to make intentional choices like everything behind me is a white plain background and I didn't go like this because then I would see there's like a wooden bar there from the window and that line you can see the tile on the floor and that's kind of distracting versus if I turn the camera this way then we have a, a more clean line. So that's those are skills that I picked up during my career in like photography and videography. So during your day, you just do them, but we take them for granted. So you can wind back and think about when these things were not intuitive and they weren't just second nature. And it will, it'll help you to realize how much you're creating. Like I said, when you put clothes together, like if you get dressed up today, you're putting an outfit together in your life to learn how to make a good looking outfit or an outfit that represents you, your personality, your style. Um, same with food and your meals. Not just how to cook, but how to cook in a way that you like. Or if you don't cook um, and you go to a restaurant or something, it took you time to learn how to read a menu and to, to be able to order. Like, do you remember being like a five-year-old and your parents are like, you, you tell the waitress what you want and you're like, ah! Like, that's a skill you have to learn. So you created an order, you, and you would be proud of your child, you know? You're like, I'm proud of my child. He ordered our dinner today. So it's like looking at your life and how many things you can actually be proud of. We're so easily focused on like, oh, I didn't write the next great symphony that's going to be played in some fancy hall, or oh, I haven't finished my, my novel. Like, these are these big things. And so we kind of fall underneath and we're just like, oh, I haven't created this giant thing today. Versus changing the mindset and looking down at all the amazing tiny little victories we've had. So the energy in our mind, instead of being, I haven't done enough, transforms into, I have done so much. What else should I do? Oh, I'm gonna write a chapter in my book. That'll be exciting. Like, it makes the tiny little thing super exciting. It makes you, your whole life feel like a creative, artistic experience. And that goes back to what I was saying about you're an artist because you're in this mindset. Say, what's your occupation? You don't write artist, you write doctor or physician. I fill out paperwork and I say artist. So that's why I think about this a lot. But because I think about it a lot, I realized um, that all of us qualify as artists. Everything we're doing is artistic. Even those of us that are doing sciences, there's an art that's present in the way that you do your science. The way that you do it. That makes, like, you know, there's a lot, of a lot of doctors, everybody's got this kind of same, similar information, but the way that you use that information is the way it's your art. So, Mm-hmm. I pressed let's go live on YouTube today with zero plan. <laughs> I just poured myself a cup of tea and put on this fun outfit and then was like, let's go live and just see what comes out of my mouth. <laughs> see who shows up and what they say. And this is what we have. I just created this. We created this. You guys showed up, so you gave me someone to talk to, so you're part of this creative experience. We created a conversation. 
Ronald says, I like turning a blank canvas into a form that is unexpected and even surprises you. Exactly. When we're creating, that doesn't mean we're in control. <laughs> creating often means channeling, like you're just opening up and receiving whatever's coming through. I, like I said, I didn't plan this. I'm surprised by what this conversation turns into. So that's part of the fun of it. That's why it's fun to be an artist. It's fun to create. It's fun to think of life artistically because then your, your life is full of surprises. You don't have to be in control. You don't have to have everything planned and managed and you, part of the fun of this whole life experience is when all day long you're getting fun surprises delivered. Ronald, you say that you also enjoy mixing your own colors when you paint. Yeah, you can do so much. You could, you could even make your own paint brushes. You could get into making your own canvases. You can, if you want to do woodwork, you could build your own table or your own easel that you use to paint on. So it's like how much of the experience do you want to be involved in? How many different types of ways do you want to approach the moment? Like, I built the table, I built the brushes, I built the paint, I mixed the paint, I used the canvas, I, like, I, I, from, I made this from scratch. Or you're like, actually, no, I'll let other people build those things. I want to focus just on this thing. I'm going to be a paintbrush maker. Or I'm going to be a painter and everyone else can make the equipment. It's fun to think about it, like how much can you break down life so that you see how everything is so creative. Hmm, yes. Yes, Jeff, exactly. A Japanese brush maker devotes his entire life to perfect brushes. That's what I mean. Anything. You can be like, I'm going to be folding towels. And at first you're like, mm. but then you see someone that's truly devoted to that and that you, there'll be so much beauty in it. Such a meditation. Um, and such a gift when they hand it over to somebody. Like, here is your towel that I made for you. You're gonna savor that towel. You're like, someone made this towel. It's like a piece of art. Uh, I think I'll leave it at that. Feel free to continue the conversation in the comments below. If you want to see my painting session, I didn't live stream it this morning, but I did get my GoPro out and my uh, DSLRs and have him just recording. So I'll share that with my studio members, the video footage of me painting this morning at sunrise. I'm not interacting or anything. I just had the camera rolling in the background, but you can see how I made that. If you like it, if you don't, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of fun to, to just see it come to life and how all the different renditions that happen along the way. Um, I'll put links in the description below for my blog, for my studio membership, if you want to sign up for that, and for my painting shop online, because we're adding prints and paintings to it now that you can buy. And um, I'll also put a link in there to Spotify so you can listen to the songs that I've written. Uh, for studio members, I'm going to give you guys a book report. So, um, let's see what day is it. It's coming towards the end of the week. So this week, you can look forward. We have yoga classes, yoga class, naked yoga class, behind the scenes painting, book reports. Book report means I'm going to tell you what's going on in my book that I'm writing. And then there's chat too, so I'm gonna go answer messages. So if you wanna chat with me directly, you can go join the studio membership over there. I've also updated the studio. So there's um, a video library on my website. You can log into my website and access my whole video library. And I just added a, a blog. So it's a, a members only blog. So if you go to shawwild.com forward slash blog, that's my public blog. 
and the link for that will be down below. That's where it's like my travel blog and I, I, show, I show you the adventure that I'm on. Like, here's my poetic writing and the observations about my travels and my art projects. Once you log into the website and you're in the members area, then there's a members only blog, which I'm letting myself speak with a little bit more uh, personal tone. My public blog is more like I've written, it's, it's like beautifully written. But the members only blog is a little bit more like a social media where I'm just, I'm not really like rereading it or editing it. I'm just kind of like, here you go, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> This is what I'm thinking right now. I made this video, check it out. And um, I'm predominantly, it's a video library. So the blog is showing you the newest videos that I'm making. Um, a lot of like behind the scenes stuff. So if you ever see my videos, like music videos on YouTube with members, I'm sharing more of the like the raw video footage. If you wanna see what I actually recorded before it got edited into something fancy. Um, and also all the videos that are no longer allowed. I've had to take down a bunch of videos from my social media and now there's a bunch of videos that I love to make but I can't post them publicly. So they're available for the studio members and I'm, I'm making new ones but I'm also uploading old ones that had to get taken down. So yeah. Is that everything? New paintings going up for sale in the online shop. I'm writing a novel. Studio members get updates on how the novel's coming along. Studio members also get yoga classes. I'm kind of drawing a blank. There's a bunch of things going on in my world. If you want to know more, just click the link below and explore. My website's like a whole little what's the word rabbit hole jump in and explore it okay oh also I sent out a newsletter do you guys get my newsletter I'll put the link for that, that down below too I send out a newsletter maybe every other week or something and um, if you sign up for my newsletter that's where I'll send an announcements when something is being released it's like a bigger project and I also it's kind of like a personal little letter for fans and I'm thinking I'll use whatever I send in my newsletter, I'll put that also on my blog. So you can find it there too. But I sent one out last night. So if you get my newsletter, go check your email because there's an email waiting for you from me. If you're a studio member, I'm also playing music for you. Guitar and letting you see the behind the scenes of the new songs that I'm producing. Yes, you're so welcome. It feels really nice to be kind of settled because I've been traveling a lot in the last year. So now it's really nice to just, um, to feel like I'm staying put for a little while so I can get back into like the rhythm of creating art without having to check into a new hotel room every day. I'm just, I really love it. It's like the structure allows so much flow. The structure of a simple life is allowing so much creativity to flow. And there's, it's possible for me to give you guys a little bit more steady like reliability or consistency in showing up for live streams and releasing stuff, at least for now, at least for the summer. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later. And I'll see you over in the, um, studio membership because I'm going to go hang out over there. Yes, and I'm still diving and snorkeling. I have uh, studio members, you get to see my new little music video that I made of me snorkeling in my new free diving fins with a sea turtle. <laughs> so if you want to watch that music video, I'm going to post that. Um, week for studio members. I will talk to you later.